Welcome to Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian, and today, as promised, we are going to work on that halftone, try to finish it out today. Uh, you know, I did it Monday. I got contacted by a bunch of viewers that were clearly far more familiar with the whole halftone process than I am. Uh, they gave me several recommendations. One of them was to take a nylon bristle brush or a fine wire brush and work on the grooves. So I did a little bit of that with a nylon brush, but as you, I'll show you right now that it's not great. My nylon brush isn't stiff enough. saw right there I did get a lot more of the sawdust out uh, by doing that it's not perfect but it's as close as I'm gonna get it I mean this is just on a piece of plywood so the difference today is is when I paint it I'm not going to just go heavy duty on the paint I'm gonna try to hit it lightly and see if I can get it down in the grooves and try to take it easy because I'm really afraid of sanding off the, all the little edges there where it went back and forth when I do sand, I'm going to switch over and do some 220 sandpaper. Generally, whenever I'm doing this stuff, I'm using 100 to 120 grit. That's what I usually start out at. And if it's a fine piece, I'll finish it out to about 150. But today, we're going to hit with 220. Just to take just a little bit off at a time because I don't want to sand all the way through everything. So after that, we're going to look at a couple of things on the machine. I've got a guy out of Australia named Michael that is currently in the middle of a build. He has several questions. And so the question of the day, he, he asked me earlier. Uh, I'm going to just address that one. It's over the uh, glide plates that are on the rails. And we're just going to take a look at it. So let's go. So that was obviously a pretty good success. One thing that I didn't think about till after I got out over here and started sanding. So right here you can see, oh, it looks great, right? But if we go from the other side, you can still see it, but I think I should have hit it from both directions. That way, wood on both sides of it. Well, it always looks good in the camera. I don't know what's up. Right here I can see the different angle uh, where I didn't put paint from the other direction. And I think next time I'll probably try that. But clearly I need to be painting these things because it really makes that thing stand out great. So now we're going to run over and discuss an issue that somebody's having on Bill. It's Michael out of Australia. Let's go check that out. His first question for me was how did I come to the distance I used from the bottom of the Z slide and from the bottom of the gantry? Well, after I explained to him, I really didn't have a scientific method. I just kind of held the Z slide up about where I thought it should ride and I made the gantry on the top of my rails afterwards. That way I would stay above the wood and I never saw myself really seeing, seeing anything over five inches. So you can see right here, I'm right at five inches from the bottom of the Z slide. I told him 10 inches, I told him 10 inches from the gantry. It's actually about 10 and five eighths from the gantry to the tabletop. So Michael, if you're watching, that was my bad. I thought it was 10 inches, but it's 10 to 5 eighths. Couldn't remember all my little measurements. But again, I didn't really use any scientific method to come up with this other than I looked at other machines and just kind of went off what they had. 
So his next question was on my glides that go on top of my linear rails. Uh, did I have to drill a lot of holes in the aluminum plating that I used? I'm going to let this speak for itself. I'm going to call that a yeah. I drilled a lot of holes. So what each one of these is, you can see there's a glide right here. Four holes. I've got two glides on each rail. So right there will be 16. There's four right there for the ball screw that rides on the ball screw in the middle. And then there's four right here on the angle iron that I use to mount my Z-slide. So in this one overall, there were 24. Now, on one of the slides to the side, there's actually four right here for this glide, four right there for that glide, and then there is four right in here for the ball screw. And that's all I've got on those. And so what you're really looking for there is not necessarily having to drill as many holes. I would just did the double rail on the gantry for support. I mean, I didn't know how I'd keep the Z slide if I did it on one rail. I didn't want the Z slide, you know, to tip up like this. So by putting it on two rails, you can see it holds it to the back and it can't tip forward. That's the whole reasoning behind two rails on the gantry. So when I came out here, I actually initially intended on doing that, doing the uh, half tone, showing that on the machine, and perhaps working on a frame that I was supposed to be working for, working on for somebody. However, hopefully this translates on video. That is another storm rolling in. So I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna close this one off here before too long. The half tone there, it came out cool as you saw, and I've, I've got flooded with requests, uh, people wanting to do orders on the halftone stuff. So let me make this recommendation. I have no problem doing people's orders on the halftone. Why don't you wait until I get three or four more videos done doing halftone stuff? Because I'm gonna try some different things. I'm gonna try it in different woods. Uh, I'm probably gonna try some landscape stuff just to see how it looks if the, if the whole thing is done and it's a great big scene. And you know, I may have to even play a little bit with color to my airbrush in there, some green grass, green tree, brown trunk, you know, stuff like that. Don't know yet. I haven't messed with it enough. So I'm not turning anybody away uh, when they want to put an order in on that stuff. But my recommendation is just let me get three or four of them under my belt. So I mean, that'll be a month or two because I've got other orders. I've still got to fill between now and then, but I just, I'm just not enough confident. I don't have enough confidence in it yet because I, these settings that I set this, they just flying by the seat of my pants. I don't know if they're right or not. I'm gonna have to do more research and check depths and stuff like that. I honestly just kind of guessed it, how deep to go on it. And I mean, it came out good, but I don't know if that's correct. So I, I'll do the orders, but you're gonna have to wait a little bit because I'm gonna have to get more confident with that part. So like y'all saw there, uh, I showed out the window. I'm now hearing it thunder. So I'm probably gonna make this a little bit shorter video than normal because it is fixing to storm again. And hopefully it's not like our last one, the 81 mile an hour winds. God, what a mess. I'm still cleaning up from it. I still got tree branches everywhere. <laughs> so guys, that's gonna be about it for today. If y'all haven't done so yet, run over and check me out at Smoky Uncuffed. I'm on podcast, YouTube, and have a website for that one. And if you hadn't done so yet, please subscribe to Smoky CNC Woodwork, and I'll see y'all next time.